Good evening and uh, welcome to the Scar Scarborough Zoning Board of Appeals, September 10th, 2014. Uh, Karen, could we have a roll call, please? Sure. Um, Leroy Crockett. Art Dillon. Here. Um, was there no Leroy Crockett? Okay. Rick Loisel. Martin Marciso. Here. Jim Stark. Here. Michael Richard. And Tom Stanhope. Here. Okay. And uh, this evening, uh, Mr. Masisso and Mr. Stanhope, you'll both be voting. Okay. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to take just a moment to uh, to welcome Karen Patterson as our new uh, secretary, and uh, thank you so much for, for joining us. Thank you. We'll start off this evening. Uh, we've had a couple of uh, of appeals tabled, so we'll start this evening with appeal number 2532. This is a miscellaneous appeal. Actually, uh, this has been changed from a miscellaneous appeal to a special exceptions appeal. Uh, based on some information that the planning department has uh, has come up with, um, let's see. I assume. I, okay, yeah, this is this is the uh, Flaherty's. This is James Flaherty is uh, requesting an expansion of an existing non-conforming use to include uh, hosting special events in an R2 zone. Uh, do we have someone here from the, the Flaherty's to take a stand? Okay, would you please? Uh, Take the microphone and take the name and the address. That would be terrific. Mr. Longstaff, you did go over the change of the uh, appeal with the appellant. Yes, just to clarify, um, originally when the Flaherty's came in with their um, request and their project, w I was uh, looking at it as an expansion of a non-conforming use in the R2 zone, um, which would have could have been handled as a miscellaneous appeal. Um, expansions, um, conversions, you know, all of those things to a non-conforming use. But in closer um, review, uh, we realized that it's not actually a non-conforming use. It's a use that can be allowed by special exception, although it's been that use has occurred on that lot for many decades, long before the zoning ordinance was in, so it's never had to have the special exception approval. It's been a grandfathered use. However, in expanding the structure and adding this new proposed use that does fall under commercial ag, it's now time to upgrade and trigger that and, and take it and give it that special exception review okay. and, and approval. They could continue doing the current activities, the commercial current, the, the current commercial agricultural activities as they are indefinitely but with this new use it's sort of time to bring it all up to speed and up to standard and so I actually gave them the wrong application although in the miscellaneous appeal they needed to address the special exception criteria so that's all right. been done it is just a different it's kind of a name change and a little bit different standard so rather than saying it's it's to expand an existing non-conforming use, it's to actually conduct a, a use that is permitted by special exception. Okay. Thank you very much. We appreciate the I'm hoping that's clear as mud. Yeah, yeah no, that, that, that helps. <laughs> that helps a lot. All right. Hi, guys. Um, I'm Cindy Flaherty. I have worked and grown up on Flaherty's farm my whole life. And before I explain, I guess I'll start with the pictures. Um, this is our property on 128 Payne Road. It's owned by James Flaherty. Um, he's my dad. And the first <coughs> picture in the four pictures you guys have is of the property that was taken today, um, as well as the second picture, which shows the parking area out front of that property on 128 Payne Road. And then the second two pictures are of it from my wedding, so that's kind of what it looks like when it's all dressed up. Um, so basically we had my wedding um, last year on the farm and we had a bunch of people stop in and ask if we do that. So that's how we even realized that there was kind of a demand for this barn events type thing. Um, 
we would like to use our property, an existing barn located on 128 Payne Road, to host special events such as weddings, birthday parties, and reunions. We would be adding a small addition to the barn, a 10 by 48 shed row on the back side that would mirror the front. So in your pictures, probably shows best on the um, picture, the second picture. And um, you can kind of see that shed row that comes off the front will be mirrored on the back, so it'll be a symmetrical barn. Um, as long as all goes as planned. And um, in this edition, we'll be adding handicap accessible restrooms, which is, um, we already have an approved septic design. And we are here today to get the approval from all of you to do this. It is my understanding that this use is allowed as a special exemption on our R2 zoned land. Uh, we have adequate parking on site and plenty of land to host these events. <coughs> Mr. Longstaff, is the special ex the, uh, the handicap part of that uh, <coughs> trip anything additional? Excuse me? Is the handicap part of that with the handicap accessible stuff, does that trip anything additional? Uh, no. No, it would, it would probably come under the fire marshal's uh, permit uh, for barrier free. Um, depending on, it's triggered by size and cost. Okay. Yeah, I should add, we've already met with, um, with someone here on the fire marshals, and once this passes through, we'll be working with them to continue following through okay. with our planning process. Thank you very much. Uh, any additional comments, Mr. Longstaff? Uh, no, no uh, none other than the, what I've explained already about the different uh, type of appeal that we've changed this to. Okay. Uh, comments, questions from the board? Mr. Macisto? Was it R? It's R2 now? It is, yeah. Is it, was it R? Rural Farm at one time? As far as I know, it's always been R2. Oh. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, I just wanted to take a quick look at your sketches here. So you are, you're, I just want to clarify, you are not proposing to expand the uses beyond what you already currently are doing. You just want to provide the, a space for, for bathrooms and for changing. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Um, well, we have some standards that we will need to go through. And I'd like each of the board members to comment on each of these standards, and we'll take a vote individually on them. I, I do need to tell you that the special except, exception is a very hard uh, exception to, uh, to actually for us to approve. But um, we'll go through it and we'll come up. I'd like you to <clears throat> please first comment on each of these before the board discusses them. Okay? <clears throat> the proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of the design of, of operation. Um, we already have an approved septic system that can be installed that meets all the standards as far as septic systems go. Okay. Let's start on down with uh, Mr. Loisel. Would you, would, I mean, Mr. Crockett, Crockett would you uh, begin comments on that and give any input that you might have or questions? No, the fact that they're already looking at the septic and have an approved system in place is... Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Stanhill? And that's been town approved already, the septic system? We have it, We don't approve it until it's issued to us as a permit application. The design, though, is, is for a reception area with 90 seats. Mm -hmm. So they've, they've, the design is adequate. We would have no problem with this okay. design once the applicant comes with their mm -hmm. total project application. Thank you. I'm in favor with the proposal. I see no problem with that. Okay. And I, I as well, I don't see where it's going to uh, make, <clears throat> make any uh, effects there. i um, like to call for a vote. Uh, those in favor of A? All approved. Second question is the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in the vicinity. Um, we have plenty of parking and we have quite a large entrance off the road and tons of road frontage if we needed to add additional entrances. Okay. Do you foresee any additional parking, um, any, any additional traffic above what you currently are doing or very much? 
I don't think so. I mean, we have a ton of traffic already at the farm stand on those busy, like, Memorial Day and stuff. I can't see it being too much busier than that, so. Okay. I guess I'd like to back up one, one little shot, too. What precipitated you deciding that you needed to have this, this additional uh, section of the building on there? Um, basically, we wanted to add bathrooms, and I think the barn would look nicer if it was more symmetrical looking in general. Um, so that was basically our reasoning. I mean, if it all came down to it, I guess we didn't need to add the addition, but I think it would look the best. Okay. And basically for facilities for changing and stuff for the weddings and whatnot. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. For the board, uh, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions. Uh, when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in the vicinity. I have a question. And sure. When you plan to host these types of events, they typically would be more or less off hours of your standard traffic flow, mm -hmm. more or less, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, probably. Maybe on a weekend or, you know, special time. So I, I don't see any additional traffic concerns okay. in okay. that regard. Terrific. Mr. Stanhope? I, I agree also. Uh, it probably won't be maybe two or three times a month anyways on weekends or something, so uh, I agree with that as well. Mr. Crockett. I, I have some, I don't know if it's reservations, but I mean, I know the traffic pattern down there seems to be getting busier and busier. So, I, I mean, I don't know if that's going to create something or not. I don't know if we, if there's been any other study or anything like that, or if there's anything needed for a traffic pattern especially with the change of the Dunstan Corner intersection a little ways down. But I know that road's been getting much busier. I'm thinking riding potentially 90 cars for an event. Well, it's 90 seats. There. 90 seats, okay. I doubt very much it would be 90 cars. Okay. So probably about 40 or 50, maybe. It would, it would come. I'm sorry if you want me to answer that, Mr. Chairman. I don't mean to speak out of Yes, time. please. I'm, I'm kind of bypassing no, you here. No, that would be great. <laughs> um, uh, I think the way it would function is you would have you would see an influx of traffic in bunches during the event. I doubt very much you'd probably see two events in one day, but you might no. occasionally. <laughs> no, definitely um, So not. probably one event in one day. So at whatever you know, three or four hour period that event was happening, that's when that traffic impact would happen. Um, I would go on to say that I'm pretty sure that the activity, if if the board were to approve it and they went forward with the project, they'd still have to go before the planning board for a site plan review and approval. And I believe at that time, traffic um, would be addressed as far as how many vehicle trips additional per day that this this activity would generate. So the, the planning board would use the design, the site design criteria that um, um, they normally would on any site plan review, I think, to, to look at that impact. Um, I, I just offer that up as sort of a safety net for you folks, should you have concerns about that, if you wish to um, put any emphasis on that for the planning board to look at in their review, you can certainly do that. Now, is there a designated, do you have anything per se right now for a designated entrance and exit? We do, yeah, right now. Events? Right now, there is one entrance that goes in, and we've talked about putting in an additional entrance right across from the farm stand itself, um, but we haven't finalized that. I guess it will just depend on what we need to do and what you guys see fit to make traffic flow the best. If I'm understanding, we're not going to have the final say on traffic anyways. No. It's going to be the planning board that's going to address that. But I do, I do have some concerns with that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's definitely an area that's been getting busier. Okay. So, I mean, I, I probably have some reservations on that. That would be my okay. own personal opinion. Mr. Masisso? I think that should be passed on to the planning board to uh, <coughs> answer the, the, the vehicular traffic and the pedestrian. I'm sure there's no sidewalks down there, is there? No, but they wouldn't be on paint. It's all on one property. Okay. So. But this is on B, says all pedestrian traffic. So I think the planning board will, will I, I'm okay with it. <clears throat> I, I actually don't have any issues with it at all. Um, 
mainly based on the fact that you said you, you don't expect a great deal of additional traffic uh, above what you already currently have. Yeah, exactly. So if, you're, if you're handling the traffic now and it's not an issue, I, I don't foresee it uh, being a real issue. Yeah, and also chances are the farm stand will be probably, it'll probably be after hours of the farm stand. And I mean, there's quite often 40 cars at the farm stand at once. So sure. it's not like it's a huge difference. Right. Do they use that side of the road for parking? No. Where, where the barn is? No. Nope. Okay. No, it's two separate things, but all in the same vicinity. And I'm assuming you would probably be strongly encouraging people not to park over no. the <laughs> No, there's plenty of space. Yeah, I had like 200 people at my wedding, and there was plenty of space on our side of the road for all that traffic. That's why I include the picture in there of the parking area. It's pretty large. So, so you'll probably have that designated out if you have any events as no parking in that area. Yes, yep. We have a vote on C. Those in favor? Those opposed? I'm sorry. Approve. Oh, approve. Okay. Yes. Oh. Mr. Um, Pocket? I'm in favor as long as we can send something on to the planning board okay. mm -hmm. to, right. to definitely research okay. this and do some more details on it. So everyone is? Okay. okay. D, uh, the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse uh, effect on the water supplies. Um, basically I have that this property and building are not in a highly populated or residential area anyways, and we're going to be staying away from the water supplies. Um, so I don't know what else to add to that. <laughs> okay. Ward? I don't, I don't see any problem with it. Same here. Yeah. That's correct. I would agree. Good. Mr. Massissel? I think it would have a lot less effect than the, when the cows were in there. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, I agree. I'm, I'm all set with that. Uh, vote on that. Uh, those in favor? Okay, all in favor. And F, uh, located in a shoreland zone, this is not, is it? No. Okay, so F does not apply. J, the applicant is, has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposal, uh, proposed to be uh, able to carry out the proposed use? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, Number H, the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to Section 5 of this section. Yes. <laughs> and I, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. Um, again, this property and building are not in a highly populated residential area, and the surrounding neighbors are basically ourselves and family, so. Okay. <laughs> I don't uh, really members know of the board? what else to add to that. I would agree with that. I, I think the amount of noise would be minimal in very short time frames. Okay. Mr. Stanhope? Agreed as well. Are you planning on having any, like, bigger bands or anything like that at the facility, or is it just... No, just probably a standard DJ, and I believe, I don't know about the town ordinance on... Um, noise and stuff, but we'll definitely be following all of that if there's a cutoff time or whatever. Okay. Mr. Massisso. I have no problem. <clears throat> I, I, just, uh, I just got a question here too. How late would you anticipate uh, would be the latest that you would have an event? Um, I would say 10 o'clock or so at night would be probably the latest, but again, we could obviously change that if there's an issue with that and make it earlier in the night or... Mr. Longstaff, is there, a, um, there any kind of guidelines on this within the city? I don't believe that I'm aware of. There is a noise ordinance, but Just that's, in general. A, that's enforced by the police department. Okay. All right. And I think it, it does go to the hour. I think I can't remember the starting hour. I want to say 7 o'clock, 10 o'clock, I believe. Okay. I don't have it in front of me, but uh, there, there is a, a noise ordinance. It's either 10 or 11 o'clock at night. It, it might vary on the weekend by an hour. but yeah. Okay. Okay, so you'll be within the, within the town ordinances and you'll check those. Yep. Okay. So a up or down vote on that? Uh, the yeses? Yes. Okay. Um, Were you a yes? That was all. Okay. Okay, and we'll need an overall vote from the board. Uh, those in favor? 
Mr. Yes. You keep talking about your wedding and all that. Is this specifically limited to weddings or? No, or no. It would be open to any special any events, special reunions, birthday parties, right. what have you. Yep. Okay. To open this to public comment, anyone care to speak to this? Nobody from the public. We'll close a couple public comments. And final vote from the board. I received, I received no written comments. No written comments. <laughs> okay, no letters. Okay. One other quick question, Mr. Yes. Chair. Um, Mr. Mr. Sissel brought it up. What other events do you think you'd be looking to have there other than weddings? Probably like birthday parties or reunions, things like that. Okay, because reunions you could get into <coughs> many people. You could get into hundreds. Well, probably not reunions, Possibly. but yeah. <laughs> like birthday parties and other small yeah, functions. <clears throat> well, will this go to like the planning board for, for further yes. Yes. Uh, direction to the applicant? I think so, yes. yes. So we're, we're just uh, doing the special exception for, for non conforming use to be more non conforming. It's not a non it's No, again, I'll try to explain one more time. It's not a non conforming use. Okay. It's a grandfathered use that is allowed. Yeah by special exception. Since it's grandfather, they've already been doing it, but now they're changing or modifying that, and it's time to go back and get that special exception approval. Okay, so you're approving a, a use that can only be done by special exception from the Board of Appeals. Okay, that cleared it up. A, a use that they've been already doing. Okay. Um, any other questions? I'll move to approve Appeal 2532 as presented. Okay. Have a vote on that. Yes. Okay. You're approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You will uh, you will be required to to begin any construction uh, within six months. Or no. Or one set. Or at least no. one set. Yeah, I think we probably guess not. Did she leave one set? That's no. No, she no I don't think we probably need them. Okay. That one's not gonna make this one. So let me let me get something clear. Because they're building the bathrooms is the reason they gotta go down to the planning board. Yeah. Because if they weren't building the bathrooms, there would be no need for a site right. plan review. Right. Traffic or anything else, because they've already had a, they it's already do it there. It's that and the added activity of hosting events at the barn. So that triggers, that triggers the need for the special exception. Okay. Not block, block planning board. Like to put, uh, yes. I just Both passed it down. Or, right. or yeah. Oh, for the planning board? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Brian yeah. took it down there. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah because it's, yeah. A, it's a modification. <laughs> I'm like, what? What? So easy, be so confused on something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, appeal number 2533, I believe. Mm -hmm. This is a variance appeal. Oh, variance appeal by. And Lisa Lynch, and that they were of 20 Vesper Street. They want to construct a mudroom six feet from the side property line, uh, and reorient the front steps 4.8 feet from the pro from the front property line uh, in an R4 zone. And 
The R4 zone requires a 15 foot side setback and a 30 foot front setback, so they're asking for a 9 foot variance and a 25 foot respectively. Mr. Fisher, please state your name and uh, your representation. Thank you. Good evening, members of the board. I'm Jim Fisher with Northeast Civil Solutions, here this evening representing uh, uh, Ken and Lisa Lynch. Uh, who are, uh, Ken Lynch is on business travel this time, so he wasn't able to uh, to be here, but um, as Jim has uh, read out to you, we are looking for a, uh, a hardship variance, which I'll explain the reason for uh, in just a moment, regarding the uh, proposed construction of a very small mudroom at the back of the structure. Uh, before I get, begin, I just wanted to state really quickly that uh, it's been my pleasure to be here for almost 22 years to present projects before this board, and I can't remember a time when I haven't had an actual presentation copy to be able to present and refer to and when we're going through things. But we had just a slight issue a couple of days ago, and uh, what was our office is no longer. And uh, toward that end, the presentation copy that uh, looked pretty cool, actually, is uh, not now so much. So in any case, uh, by the time we're next here, or uh, but next before you, um, everything will be uh, back to normal and we'll be rocking and rolling and doing what we normally do. So I apologize for not having a presentation copy for you, but if you would please refer to the plan at the back of your packet. Uh, that is what I would have presented, uh, albeit in, uh, in larger format. And uh, that does have all the information that you may, graphic information that you may need to be able to see, and I will be referring to that uh, here over the course of the next few minutes. Essentially, what we're looking at is uh, another property at Higgins Beach that is uh, relatively small, and the, the cottage on which uh, we're placed on the lot is also relatively small. The point being is that it was constructed, I believe, back in 1940, uh, as many of these structures were from 100 plus years ago up to uh, relatively recently, but this is an original structure. Uh, and you can see that uh, on that plan at the back of your packet that uh, the situation of the house is well outside of the zoning envelope that was created well after the fact uh, from 1940. Uh, in fact, the eve of the existing house is um, about three inches from the property line. Uh, so we're certainly not increasing any nonconformity. But essentially what happens is uh, the Lynches have owned this property for about 12 years. Uh, they are now in the process of downsizing. Uh, they also live in Scarborough, so they're downsizing, and they intend to be able to uh, um, create this as their principal home. As such, because it's more of a seasonal cottage as the way it was originally created, they would like to be able to um, make it a four-season home. And toward that end, it's not really conducive, given its relatively small size, uh, the, the principal entrance or the, entrance, the primary entrance that they use uh, being off the deck in the back. It's not really conducive to walking into the, uh, the kitchen area. Um, with, they would like to be able to basically have the mudroom, uh, because as right now, you can imagine being on the beach, and especially year-round now, uh, tracking snow and sand and detritus uh, in from the back deck, they would simply like to be able to have a very small mudroom in that area, and the, the dimensions of which would be six by six, uh, base, almost six by seven. Uh, it's actually six by 6.9 uh, with a one foot eave that would correspond to the eaves on the rest of the house. The reason we're here for a hardship is a fairly simple process as far as the, uh, uh, the size of the proposed mudroom, but the reason we're here as a hardship variance is that um, even though we are not in the shoreland zone, which usually precipitates a hardship variance. Um, a portion of the property is located in the flood zone. Uh, so we're here this evening uh, asking for a hardship variance because that is a requirement. Anything, any portion of a property that's in a flood zone does require that. Uh, in this particular case, you'll note, although it's kind of challenging to see on the actual plan before you, that uh, the entirety of the house actually is not in a flood zone. It's just a portion of the property. Nonetheless, the statute refer requires um, hardship variance for any portion of a property that might be designated as in a flood zone. And the flood zone in this case is uh, off to the southerly side or the left-hand side as you're oriented on this plan. Um, so normally, were it not for the fact that a portion of the property is in the flood zone, we'd be here asking for a practical difficulty because, again, we wouldn't meet, the based on the current situation of the house or location of the house, um, we wouldn't be able to um, fit anything or this mudroom in the, uh, the, the building envelope. And the reason for that, and you'll see some photographs that are attached in your packet as well, is that the, um, the mudroom is uh, uh, exactly centered on the existing uh, door, the entrance uh, access way in the back of the house. There is a, uh, there was a question, Brian had a question about uh, um, uh, very uh, logically, well, can the door just be slid over a little bit? And it can't for a myriad number of reasons. Um, first of all, there is a, there's a support wall that runs down right down the middle of the house. 
um, and there's a carve out of that support wall where there's a little anteroom, which is where the door is. And on either side of that door, on one side is the bathroom. Again, this is a very small cottage. And on the other side is a little alcove, which is plumbed for the washer and dryer unit. Um, so really the door is where it is, and the door itself can't really be moved. Uh, on the other side of that washer and dryer unit is the bedroom, and the, everything is rather small. So toward this end, uh, the Lynches did take a look at that. They've engaged a, uh, a design, building designer uh, and a contractor to take a look at it, and the contractor said, uh, given the uh, location of the kitchen and then the plumbing for the washer-dryer unit, that the door really has to stay where it is. And toward that end, giving a mudroom, because it's uh, an accessory to the existing door, we really need to have it where it is. Uh, the point being there is that uh, you can see the building envelope, which is a dashed dotted line on this plan. It's just outside of that envelope. Nothing as far as the deck or the rest of the house is going to change, notwithstanding the stairway in the front that I'll get to in just a moment. So it's literally just uh, building out a bit uh, on the, the mudroom from the access way. It's going to be uh, uh, six feet, including the eave, or the proposal is to have it be six feet from the side setback. Uh, again, the actual house itself is only three in, or the eave of the house itself is only three inches from that side setback. So there's certainly no greater nonconformity that we're looking at um, toward that end. And then the property to the north um, is uh, wooded, so that there's not likely to be any impact, uh, visual impact or anything that way. Yes, somebody's property, they could certainly take down the woods, but uh, again, it's only a six by seven foot room, six by 6.9 foot room, um, and the logical mudroom being what it is, that's, that's the request that we have before you this evening. Uh, the other portion of this request uh, is something that we had suggested to them. Uh, that they can do as far as reducing a nonconformity on the existing property, and that is uh, the front stair right now uh, is oriented directly toward the, uh, the right of wire, toward the street. And it's also not one of these types of stairs that's particularly conducive to using it. First of all, that's a little porch room right up front, and it's the, the kind of thing that just does not bode well for the main entrance. Uh, and also what happens is when people come out that stair, they tend to just, there's no sidewalk or anything that leads out to the road. It's just down to the grass, and they tend to fly out the stair and, you know, toward the street. So what we suggested is uh, also this is a, a, uh, an outward swinging door, obviously, and uh, there's no landing. So the door opens and the step is right there. So if you're coming up the step trying to open the door, you actually have to back down the steps to let the door open before you can come back up again. So what we suggested is that they turn the, uh, they create a small landing so the door can open while people are actually standing on the landing, turning this step uh, 90 degrees so it's actually facing toward the driveway, so it reduces the front setback nonconformity, uh, not by much, but by a foot, and, uh, and orients from a safety perspective uh, pedestrian traffic toward the driveway as opposed to toward the street. It doesn't have to be done this way, but uh, it, it tends to be pretty logical that way, and it's, uh, we like to be able to reduce nonconformities when we can. And toward this end, they agreed with that uh, readily. So there's basically two parts to this, that first part being the mudroom, and the second part being the relocation or the reorientation of the stairs. With that, I'd be happy to uh, go through the uh, um, Mr. Longstaff, the application. other than uh, the comments that you had provided us with, uh, anything else if you'd like to add to that? Okay. Uh, questions from the board? I've um, got one question, Mr. Fisher. Um, the front steps, the re reorientation of the front steps, are you going to keep those the same size? Are you proposing to keep them the same size? Or are they going to be expanded or when you, when you turn them? Uh, the, the width of them will be the exact same size. They will be, uh, the overall structure itself will be slightly longer because we're going to be adding a 4 by 4 landing to it. Um, right now there isn't one. It just it literally comes out on a, a four foot wide stairs. It just goes right down uh, about uh, uh, four and a half feet down to the grade. And so in this case, by or reorienting this 90 degrees, we'll have that little landing, that 4 by 4 landing, and then the steps will come off of that. So the, um, so the orientation of those will be um, facing to the left? That's correct, okay, as, as you're looking at that way. picture, right where the bush is. Okay. And in the rear, um, I see that the proposed addition is considerably shorter, not, considerably less distance out um, than, the, than the overall deck. How much further is it than the current landing that goes into that? You mean how much further, uh, what's the, the proposed mudroom uh, relative right. to the deck itself? Right. No, not from the deck itself, from the current landing that, that goes into that door. Well, it's going to be built on the level of the deck. 
Um, you can see right now that there's actually a, um, I'm not sure if this is answering your question, but um, when you refer to the plan, you'll see that the, uh, the area of the um, kind of the small abutment of the deck, uh, there's the main deck area, and then you've got that small abutment that heads over toward the north. Uh, that's where the proposed mudroom is, so it's going to go about a foot and a half further back, uh, which it, from where that, uh, that little L-shaped portion okay. of the deck is. That was my question. Okay. Great. Okay. Still considerably less than the, than the full width of the deck. Yes. Okay. Okay. Any additional questions from the board? Letters from the public? I received no public comment. No public le letters. I'd like to open it up for public comment. Do you care to, uh, to comment on this? Okay. Closed for public comment. Okay, we will go through the standards for variance appeal. And Mr. Fisher, I'd like you to answer these if you would please, and then I'll ask the board to follow up. Certainly. Uh, the land in question cannot yield a, re yield a reasonable return unless the variance is granted. Um, as it pleases the board, I'd like to just be able to read this answer if you have sure. the information uh, before you. Uh, with most of the dwellings in the Higgins Beach area having been or being converted to year-round homes uh, from seasonal cottages, a reasonable return for properties in the area cannot really be realized without a variance granted to make the house uh, more conforming to the standards of houses that are already in that area and that they enjoy. As you know, I've been before you as well as many other people uh, quite often regarding uh, the remodeling and, uh, the, and reconstruction of the houses in that area. And um, it, it, quite a number of houses are being significantly enlarged, uh, so be it. This one is not being enlarged, it's just simply the, the mudroom. And so the character of that, which I'll we'll get into that in just a moment, um, is such that it's actually going to be uh, enhancing the, uh, the overall house. So a summer cottage that was not constructed with the intent of year-round living, uh, well, neighboring cottages have already been expanded to conform to uh, overall neighborhood conditions. Uh, this variance is required to also yield reasonable return relative to many of the other properties that are in that uh, exact same vicinity. Is there a great deal of additional work going on besides just these two uh, variants, these appeals? To the house itself? Yes. Um, not particularly. They're going to be uh, winterizing it with some insulation, uh, or so we're told, uh, by the uh, the contractor, uh, because the Lynches would like to be able to move in here relatively soon, as again downsizing as they are, uh, as their permanent residence. So the the answer to your question is, I don't know the extent of the remodeling in the inside, but there would be nothing further on the outside of the house, uh, no enlargements to the deck at this time, etc. Uh, and there's just going to be a little bit of information uh, that's going to be completed, or a little bit of uh, construction that's going to be completed internally. Comments from the board? Questions? Okay. Um, well, motion on number one. Well, actually, number one, let's just see a show of hands. Uh, yes or no? Uh, if those uh, those uh, in favor? That was uh, the land in question cannot yield re reasonable return unless variance is granted. Okay. State that again, please. The land in question cannot yield a reasonable return unless the variance is granted. Questions are certainly welcome. I'm finding it hard on that one. Reasonable return. Okay. I would concur. Same. <clears throat> Mr. Sisso? I think the... the uh, what they were asking for was so small. The reason we turn, the, the reason we turn is there. So if they didn't do it. The return is going to probably be very small for them if they did go ahead with these repairs. I, I, I think for me, um, the reasonable return is to be able to use your property in a, in a significantly same manner as the other neighbors, and. It appears to me that without these improvements, uh, the appellants won't be able to use that property, uh, and certainly not as a year-round property, uh, in a reasonable manner. I'm not looking at the financial side of this. Yeah. I'm looking more at a return of, of use of the property myself. Okay. I always look at, that, the, at yeah. the financial, you know. Yeah. But I understand exactly what you're saying. 
If I may, Mr. Please. Chairman, uh, just Please. comment on that uh, very quickly. Um, you're right. I mean, let's call it what it is. Can the House be occupied without this? Sure. Um, from a reasonable return standpoint, we all know that there's quite a number of houses that are being redone in that area. Um, this is, as uh, Martin had mentioned, a very, very small addition. Does it have to be there? No. But uh, is it conducive to uh, promulgating the, the existence of the house as a year-round residence? It would be very challenging for us if we were in a similar situation to, particularly in adverse weather conditions, rain and snow and what have you, uh, literally open the door, the principal door to the structure, and walk in with everything just kind of dripping literally on the kitchen floor. The only reason for this, and again, it's only a 6 by 6.9 um, little structure as a mudroom, is to literally just take off the coats and take off the boots and wipe your feet before you actually walk into the kitchen. Is that is not having that um, produce a reasonable return? Given the houses that are being redone down in that area, some of which are quite magnanimously larger than this one, um, it's the, the smaller cottages that are there are really lessening their return relative to the other properties that are in that area. And this, again, is a very small addition, and I would just suggest that uh, um, to kind of keep up with the times, as it were, a reasonable return uh, would indeed be effective um, by approving this. Thank you. I would say with the additional clarified information for myself, I, I would be in agreement with that. Um, they're making a, a small return with the front steps and making it safer as well. Uh, I think they've taken due diligence in trying to as accommodating as possible for this and, as you said, keeping up with some of the times. I also think that if they were not, if they were just wanting to add this just so they had it, um, it, it would be a little bit different. But since they're adding the insulation and probably windows and stuff so that they can enjoy this property year round, um, I think that's that's what I'm, that's kind of what I consider as reasonable, reasonable return on the property. Any additional questions from? No, I, I still have a struggle with it because it, it can yield a reasonable return, and we're not basically looking on it based upon the other properties in the area. We're looking at the specific property as to whether or not this specific property can yield a, a reasonable return without this, and we have to look at it based upon the guidelines, and that's that's what I'm struggling with because it can. I mean, we do have another entrance in, and I don't know what that leads to or anything, but I mean, there is a porch area by the looks of it there as well where something could potentially be set up if they were coming in. I understand. I think the essence is on the term reasonable, as it often is, mm -hmm. and it's certainly subjective. Um, and it, you know, with the will of the board is, is certainly what we'll adhere to. Um, I just think that, again, uh, arguing for our client certainly is what's really that definition of reasonable. Um, if it's purely financial because all they want to do is make a bigger house to rent it out in the summertime, I wouldn't be here. Uh, there are many projects that we were asked to, to bring before the board that we re just suggest, demure from, basically. Um, and those that we feel are reasonable, no pun intended, I think is, is an easier way to do it. Certainly respect your opinion, but again, if we're looking at a definition of reasonable relative to what's there now, not just uh, this site, but the overall site, and you're right, you're right, we're looking at this particular site, not necessarily the entire vicinity based on this question. But if it's not purely financial, which we typically haven't looked at that uh, in the past, then uh, I think reasonable is a, the, the definition of reasonable is a lot easier to look at in a situation like this. Again, they're not looking to expand the house by 30% or whatever toward the back. It's just a very, very small room. Um, understand your misgivings, but I think that, uh, you know, reasonable in this case may very well be reasonable. Okay, let's have a vote on that on number, on A. On a. Those in favor? Those opposed? Three opposed. Yeah. Uh, no, we're, we're, we're voting or opinionating on on both projects, the back mud room Correct. and the front stairs. Correct. You know, you're just talking about that back room, and I can understand completely there. But now you're going out front, and you're asking to change something that's been there, and it looks like the people across the street, have they, do they have stairs going into the front like this? Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like anybody uses the front. That's there's, pretty much true. There's no, so 
I mean, you're asking us, I don't want to get lost in the fog of just one thing, a vote for the back part and losing sight of they're asking for the front part, too. I understand. Well, we can certainly vote on those separately if we, and, and we well, can make that as a condition. Um, I, I guess, uh, however, I'd like to point out to Mr. Masisso that by turning those stairs, it will make it less nonconforming uh, because it will take up less, it'll be further from the street. It doesn't look, doesn't appear that way to me. Uh, it would be right now. It's about three feet from the, uh, the uh, from the front uh, from the front right of way line, yeah. and we're going to make we're going to add an extra foot to that. So it's actually going to be one foot less nonconforming. It's going to be one foot further away from the right of way. But you're adding a whole stair up to that. Depth. No, the stair's already there. Are you? I'm confused now. What are you What are you going to do? You're going to turn the stairs? Yep. It's just going to be turned 90 degrees. So you're adding stairs up to a landing. No, the stairs are already there. Uh, what we're going to be doing is just kind of shifting the stairs, and then there'll be a landing at the top of the stairs. It's just four by four, so the door can actually open out onto a landing as opposed to opening out on the stair itself. So you have, now you have a landing plus the stairs. Yeah. Which is an addition. Um, it's no closer to the right of way. Well, and yeah, it, I know that. I know. Well, okay. so we, okay. we, we're going on two things. We, there we, we can certainly we can certainly break that out, and uh, if we need to make that as a condition, if if, if the board decides that that's what they want to do, we can certainly do that. So I guess let's uh, let's vote first on the on the back of the house, on the addition on the back. So those in favor? Okay. But before we do that, Mr. Or Longstaff, can we break that out? Be a conditional, then would it? <clears throat> I just want to make sure if we're voting on this that we can actually amend this. We can make any conditions I, on the. I believe I believe that you you could with conditions approve the front steps if that was the wish of the board, the desire of the board, but not permit the back or the opposite, portion, or the opposite, opposite. whichever, right. whichever. I mean, it, it is kind of a hybrid request because right. you're dealing with the back and the front, which right. is not usually the case. It's usually a project in one area of the house or the other. But I, I, I do think you have some leeway to approve one phase of that request and not the other. Um, it would have to be worded that way in your decision to make clear. Okay. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll take a vote on just the back section only on this. So those in favor? Uh, I'm more inclined to, think, to agree with the return of being able to use a house with a mudroom in the back. So in that case, and eliminate not voting on that front part, but just on that back part for the reason of return, having a mudroom makes sense to me. Leaving the financial part of out. Okay. Those opposed? Mr. Dillon, Mr. Masuso, and Mr. Spark in favor. Okay. And let's take a similar vote on the front stairs, on the turning of the front stairs. Those in favor? See, I would be more in approval of the front stairs because it's becoming more from a safety perspective and it's becoming more in conformance. So I would agree with that. I wouldn't agree with the back. Okay. So, okay, Mr. Crockett, Mr. Stanhope, Mr. Dillon, Dillon yep. and Mr. Stark. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Passed mm -hmm. Question B. That the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not the general conditions in the neighborhood. Uh, that is correct. The circumstances of the property are such that the existing cottage was originally constructed toward one side of the lot during an era, 1940, uh, that predated zoning. Therefore, any expansion is due to the location on the lot, not to the general conditions of the neighborhood. Also, this hardship variance is only required because a portion of the property is in a flood zone, though none of the house nor any portion of the proposed location of the mudroom uh, is in a flood hazard zone. The uh, steps would not be in a flood hazard area either. Uh, again, this creates a situation that is unique to this property, not to the overall conditions of the neighborhood. Questions from the board? I'm in agreement with the testimony. Okay. Mr. Stanhope? Yes, I agree that uh, it's, it's the property versus the general conditions of the neighborhood. Okay. Mr. Crockett? I would agree. Okay. I agree. So the flood zone really does make it unique. And I would certainly agree as well. So those in favor? C, that the granting of the variance will not alter the essential character of the locality. 
Uh, that also is correct. Neighborhood character will not negative, be negatively affected, primarily because this small mudroom <coughs> at the rear of the existing house uh, where virtually no one will see it, primarily also because um, there's a wooded area next door. Yes, that wood area couldn't come down, but it hasn't ever. So it's not likely that really anybody is going to see it other than perhaps the abutter to the rear, but they're also sheltered landscape-wise, so it's highly unlikely that it's really going to change any uh, uh, structural um, aesthetic of that area. Also, by enhancing the cottage with a mudroom, the addition will actually enhance the essential character by bringing the house into a greater conformity with many of the neighboring houses. Okay. Um, members of the board. I would agree. I agree. As well. Mr. Sisson. Uh, I agree, but I've got to make a statement. Remember, we had this uh, next lot. There's a double lot. Yes. And he was here to yeah. ask why he couldn't, couldn't split it. So maybe what they that will be split to make it more uniform. Uh, this but lot is. I, I agree with with. Uh, this this I don't believe that this lot's large enough to split. Uh, that that was a double lot that they split before, and there's no way they could split this lot. It would be too long well, for me to build on. Yeah. But I understand what you're saying. Yeah. 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 Right. But I agree. No, I'm okay. I'm in favor of it. Just okay. want to make that point. No, I I am certainly understand what you're saying there. Okay, so those in favor? All in favor? And the Can I make just a quick comment on that? Certainly. Thank you. Um, uh, I agree with the vote. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, you'll note that um, in any, if, if I or anybody else from either my company or any company comes before you as far as double lots are concerned, this isn't germane to this particular project, but you'll note that many of them, in fact, most of the lots in that area are slightly trapezoidal um, as opposed to, or excuse me, parallelograms as opposed to an actual rectangle. And whenever you start, and you're absolutely correct in the fact that the, uh, the overall um, square footage of most of these 50 by 100 lots is based on the premise that they would be 90 degrees. Under such a consideration, there may be a possibility, I'll leave that to Brian, but there may be a possibility of further splitting. But as soon as you take that and you start angling these lots, you start, I mean, you kind of get the idea where the angle goes more and more acute. You start losing square footage. It's still 50 by 100, but the angle actually does not give you what a 90 degree angle would. So many of the double lots that are in uh, the Higgins Beach area that look like you know, somebody says, oh, great, I can split this lot. Yeah, it doesn't often work that way um, if they're dual 50 by 100s. So many of the lots that look like they could be split can't be. Just you wanted to, to come see us, yes, wouldn't they? Yeah. <laughs> well, yes. he tried. He did come see us. The guy next door. <clears throat> All right. Carry on. Uh, the hardship is not the result of the action taken by the applicant or prior owner. Uh, that's correct. The, the hardship is directly the result of a zoning setback requirement that was created long after the house was originally constructed. Uh, it is not at all the result of any action taken by the homeowner or any previous homeowner. Okay. Board I, members? I agree with that. I agree. I would agree. I agree. And I agree as well. Uh, for a vote on that one? Okay. All in favor? And Mr. Fisher, I, since we did have a vote of, of three to two on that first question, it did, it did pass. So uh, we'll have an overall vote. I'd like, a, like an overall vote from the board. Those in favor? That's three, four. Mr. Masisto, Mr. Dillon, and myself. Great. Thank you for your time. Um, you know, just to be clear for the record. Yes. Are you are you approving the project as proposed, or are you splitting it into a front project and a back? We are. You I believe were, they both passed anyway. Did you vote in favor of the uh, as presented? Project? I would imagine. Yeah. I'm voting for the whole project. Okay. All right. Then then uh, it is not split. Do you need the no votes too, Mr. Chair? What's that? Do you need the no votes too? Yes. Were there any of the individual items that did not pass? No. no. So it was a positive vote on yes. each of the criteria. Right. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Yes. There was a three clearly three two vote on one of them, and it was but it was it was passed. Okay. So thank you, Mr. Fisher. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other business that the board would like to bring up? I'd also like to thank Karen for joining us. Thank you. I, I will say something from Mr. Fisher's perspective and others, um, knowing that some businesses were a little bit displaced from the recent events. 
Um, our office is across the street. We have a meeting room available for businesses that are looking to utilize some space for that that we would offer up. The Chamber of Commerce and Sedco office. Yeah. I really appreciate so we're right across the street from you behind Lois's marketplace. That's great. There are 17 of us. Yes. Yeah, any business that's experiencing hardship, come see us. Just a, a note, um, I'm not sure if this will happen next meeting or not, uh, but uh, town planner Dan Bacon will probably want to come and talk to the board and get your input on some potential changes to the beach communities, Pine Point and Higgins, as far as setbacks, setback changes and things of that nature to try to reduce the number of variance Terrific. appeals and That's edicts. Good idea. Um, so I just wanted to bring that up. I'll, I'll be um, informing the board of the exact timing of that. Uh, he'll, he'll tie it in with a meeting, a regular meeting, either as a workshop prior to the meeting or depending on the, the agenda for any given meeting, we might be able to fit it in that way. But we're, we're trying to work toward that end. And I was going to mention, should the vote have gone to the negative on the last appeal, that that could be an option for that homeowner, depending on what those changes ended up being at Higgins Beach. They could perhaps then go for a limited reduction of yard size and still meet it because it might be a five-foot reduction on a shorter setback. So sure. they're, they're, we're, we're trying to work towards some reasonable compromises that would not would allow people to, to, to do the things that they're asking to do under a variance without having to actually go to the and is this would this meeting include Pine Point area as well, or is it just just Higgins? Uh, Dan's update to us would be on both, you know, Perfect. on all the zoning okay. changes. But but one of the things that would have to happen, obviously, before anything could, could any decisions could be made, um, we'll need to have actual community meetings at you know in the Pine Point area in the Higgins Beach area. We're still undecided yet as to whether we're going to do anything with with the zoning in Prouts, um, because it, the problems aren't quite as acute there right. um, as they are in the other two areas. So we're, we're still kind of getting our feelers out on that and getting feedback from folks. But Terrific. I just wanted the zoning board to know, because you guys would be a major player in informing and feedback and, and, and in that process, which will ultimately end up going to council for, for ratification, whatever we end up coming okay. up with. So. Terrific. That's good. Good plan. Well, I have a motion on adjournment. Motion to adjourn. And second. Garborough Zoning Board of Appeals for September 10th, 2014. Did we have Alan. to sign that last one. Oh, yeah. oh yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> we can't close the meeting. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was my fault. I fell down on that one. That's okay. And I haven't. Uh, I will get there. Get the group. Okay. So. Guys, thank you very much.